Hello YouTubers, today I've gone back to basics of hacking to find infinite lives for an old game on a Commodore VIC-20, which weirdly the VIC-20 was my first home computer. I'm going to show you the game first, it's called Megavolt. So we're going to um, attach the tape and we're going to auto start it. Here we can see an unusual splash screen, and I say unusual because the way that the Commodore VIC-20 worked was there wasn't a graphics palette as such. You had to define or redefine the ASCII characters to create the multicolors that you see on screen. I'm just going to turbo or speed up the process of loading so we get the game. There we go, it's now loaded, and here we go, Megavolt by Imagine 1984. The object of the game was simple. You control this little character here that bops along. You had to collect food along the way, avoiding the various nasties. And of course you'd die. The idea was you collect all the food, collect the key, and work your way back to Fred here to free him up to the next vault. But as you can see, I'm not very good at this game. And what would be the point of um, just showing you this without cheating? Now, of course, modern day uh, emulators have got built in monitors and tools, which we didn't have back in the early 80s. In the early 80s, I have to do it the old fashioned way with peeking and poking and looking up uh, tables to find out what the assembly instructions or the opcodes were doing. Today, however, it's as simple as starting the monitor. I've used the shortcut key, but you can use um, File, Activate Monitor. And I'm using the uh, current latest version of Vice on Mac OS, also available on Windows, Linux, Android, etc. Um, as you can see here, it's 3.61 on GTK3. Okay, so I've broken into the program. We can see that the game's running. And a few things that we know. We know that we start off with three lives, represented by the, the three uh, boppy characters at the bottom. There's two now, because obviously I lost a life as you saw earlier. We also have an air bar at the top of the screen. So how do we go about finding infinite lives? We have to find the equivalent of let lives equal three. as it would be in um, BASIC. But of course, in assembly language, it's going to be something different. Now we've broken into the program. So we stopped the execution and it's currently at address $1516. And so we can disassemble that. $1516 and we can see the 6502 instructions. What we need to do is find out where any possible candidates of let lives equal three. How do we do that? We need to look for the byte sequence or a pattern, and then one of the most common ones would be the opcode for LDA hash dollar zero three. The opcode is A9, and then we need to look for zero three. And this is on an unexpanded VIC 20, so we only have three and a half K of memory to play with. Fortunately, there's a command called hunt that's built in and we can start from address 100 up until 1E00 which is the start of screen memory and we're going to look for LDA hash dollar opcode and then 03 which is our number of lives and hopefully we'll get a few hits and here we go as you can see we've got two hits at memory address 1805 and 18cc this is all in hexadecimal if you ever get stuck, you can type help and you'll get a list of commands that are supported by the emulator's monitor. Let's have a look. At, so address $1805, we want to go back a few more bytes just to see if it's any genuine code or it's just a match on data. 
I'm going to go to 17F0. And here we can see that it does look like reasonable code. And we've got a possible candidate here. So we've got load A with a value of 3. And we're going to store it at a zero page address of just $0A or poke 10, 3 in old money. Let's have a look at the other candidate at 18cc. Disassemble dollar 18 C0, let's have a look there. And here we can see, again, it's reasonable code. And interestingly, those of you paying attention will see that we're storing a value at $A, so poke 10, 3 again. Both of those addresses have something in common, and it's in a likely candidate. I couldn't find a way of poking directly with this monitor tool. So if anybody knows how to do that, please drop me a line. We're going to cheat, and I need to know which of the two candidates is the most likely culprit. We both know that we're storing the lives at, at address 10, or $0A, hopefully. I'm going to um, assemble at $1805, and we're going to load accumulator with hash dollar and let's say 0 05 for five lives. We hit return twice to come out of the assembler function. And again, we're going to assemble at $18CC. And we're going to load accumulator this time with 0 08 and see whether we get five or eight lives on the screen to see where the lives is, is being set, if at all any. It might not be this code. We press X to return and win the game. Given that we've already started, we'll just need to die or lose our lives. Okay, now we can start the game again. And look at that. We've got what appears to be at least eight lives. And we've got some corruption where the high score is being displayed. This was by design the developers to save memory, to save some code. They weren't expecting more than three or four lives the way that they intended the game. And so by changing the rules, so to speak, we've caused this corruption. But what it does tell us is we know exactly where lives is set. And if we continue to die or kill our Beep Bopalula character off, you'll see that there's no change. And that's because the high score isn't being updated and neither is our, our character until we get to a certain point. Should have set this to a lower number. Oh, here we go. We can see our characters now are, are depleting here. There we go. And that's how we got extra lives. Let's reset that then uh, back in the monitor. So we know that at address 1805, although it did. The, the same as 18cc, it actually didn't make any difference. It seems that 18cc is where the lives are set for the start of each game. So disassemble $1805, and we're going to change that back. So assemble $1805 with LDA hash $03, and then we're going to assemble at $18cc with load accumulator with hash dollar. Let's give ourselves four lives. Exit.
For a moment there, I thought I'd actually made a mistake. Um, but it seems that the screen hasn't been correctly refreshed. Hence why we still have the corruption. But what we do know is we know the address and the change needed to give us extra life. We'll reset the code. We'll do a hard reset. And we'll repeat the exercise. So we'll reload the game. Thankfully we can put it in turbo mode in an emulator rather than have to wait real time on a cassette. Okay, now we're going to go back into the monitor. Assemble $118C. Sorry, 18CC. With LDA hash $04. And return. And start the game. And you now see that we've got the extra life and everything all looks looks good. How do we find infinite lives? Well, again, we need to go back to the monitor and we need to look for any references to the memory address at $0A. If you remember at 18cc, We set the number of lives and we store it at this address. We need to find a decrement instruction. How do we know which is the right decrement instruction? Because there's different addressing modes in 6502. I provided a link to the website in the blog article, uh, which you can find with the link with the YouTube video. And we're looking for a DEC, a DC decrement instruction to start with. Now we know that the address is stored in zero page. A likely candidate then is something like DEC $0A and the opcode for DEC zero page memory is C6. We're going to use the hunt command starting from address 100 to screen memory at 1E00. We're going to look for dollar C6 decrement and $0A the memory address where the lives were stored and let's see if we get any hits and strangely we do at address 123 so let's have a look at what's going on around this code let's try it $1100 to $12F And here we've looked like we've got a, a potential candidate. The code here looks reasonable. Um, ignore the first bit here because I could have jumped in at um, uh, partway through an instruction. But what we have got is some jumps of routines, a jump, and then we've got a decrement followed by a branch if equal. And if we decrement that memory address at dollar a and it becomes zero. The zero Z flag will be set, and so we'll branch if equal to this address, which I suspect is related to losing a life. To test the theory, we can change the code. We can do one of two things. We can either add a no op instruction and then knock out these four bytes because we don't want the branch to occur. Or given that the way that this is being handled at the moment, we can cheat and use the aura command and I'm going to do that assemble dollar one two three aura or aura with dollar zero a and then we're going to disassemble that piece of code again and here you can see it's now changed from deck a or from a deck to aura and as long as that value in the lies never reaches zero this instruction will never be executed. Let's test it. Number 
number two. Number three. Up, up. Number four. What's that number three? I've lost count. But you can see what's happening here. The number of lies on the screen aren't changing. And the game just doesn't want to end either. So we've successfully found infinite lies. How easy was that? So now we know that the poke or the, the memory address that we need to change to give us infinite lives. But what if we wanted infinite time? Well, how can we find that? We don't have a number for how many air units that we have left. What we do have is a bar that appears to go down with, uh, you know, as it depletes, the pink bar becomes shorter, it gets lower. So let's go back into a monitor. Now, this one is going to be tricky because we don't have any numbers to work with. What we do know is that the screen memory address on an unexpanded VIC-20 starts at 1E00. We can have a look at the memory at that location, like so. Or we can use the SC command for screen, and this will show us some what appears to be gobbledygook. And this is actually the ASCII characters that are on display here. I mentioned before that the, it, the VIC-20 doesn't have a true graphics mode as we know it today. What we had was use defined graphics or UDGs and redefine each character of the ASCII character set to take on a representation of a part of a graphic. And this is what the author has done here. Now we know at 1E00 we've got a gap, a space, a blank. And interestingly, that's represented by a close bracket. And that is replicated here. There's another close bracket. Let's see if I can highlight it. There we go. And I would suspect that that's here. We've got a bar that will increase with the more food that we collect and the key. And this area here depletes. And we can see that we've got um, a bunch of T's. R, a P, an asterisk, and then the space. What we can do with the latest tools is set a breakpoint when the memory changes. Here we go. At 1E00, we know that the air bar is somewhere around this, this location. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C. So we're going to set a breakpoint at around 1E0C. How do we do that? Well, we can type help break and this will give us some, some pointers. And we want to break on $1E0C. Sorry, we want to break when there's a store, so it, the address is written to at $1E0C. And we've got a watch. And if you want to see how, how many breakpoints you've got, you just type break and, and here we go. Now then, I'm going to resume. But of course, we've got air already lost here. That's not going to update during this life, so I'm going to die. Which results in two possible breakpoints. Now here, we're going to have to set up, or the game will have to set up, maximum air for the level. And this is what we've got here. So we've got a breakpoint at uh, Echo Alpha Alpha Charlie. So if we disassemble that, we know that it's storing. It's, it's not really of interest. So we're going to continue the game execution because we don't have full air yet. Now we do, as you can see here. And we're going to lose the first part of air. And here we go, a likely candidate at 1199. Oops. A decrement, and we're using an indexed full address. So $1E00, the start of screen memory, with a value of X. And we can see the registers. The X is at 0C, so 1E, 0C is being decremented. 
let's have a look at what's going on around this this area of code so 1892 dollar 119f let's, let's have a nosy around there again it looks reasonable code we've got here um, the decrement instruction and then we've got a load instruction so it decrements the memory location then it loads it and then performs some kind of comparison so we can do is no op these three bytes out the de 001 a and the easiest way to do that of course would be to assemble dollar 1199 and we're going to type in not 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 three times we're going to disassemble that that code again and here we can see that we've got the three no operations so we're not going to issue the decrement command now if we return to the game you'll now see that the we don't lose any air and I just lose a life now to prove the point We're still breaking on the break point because we're still setting the screen up for maximum air to initialize the game level. But as you can see, the air is not going down and I can put it into turbo mode. Now usually within about 20 seconds in turbo, the game would, would lose its life or, or end. And there we have infinite lives, infinite air, and we know how to set the number of lives on the game. Let's come back out of here. But is there a smarter way of doing this? Well, yes, there is. So let's restore back at um, 119, which was uh, decrement dollar one e zero zero comma x. And then let's disassemble it again, just to make sure that we've restored it to how it was. And here we go, decrement. If we look further back, here we can see that actually there's some more code going on. We can ignore the breaks, they're just zero um, bytes of memory, clearly not being used or could be used for, for variables or, or any other. But we're actually loading a value from zero page at address $B4. There's a comparison, which if it's equal to, it'll branch to address at double one alpha bravo. If not, it will decrement the value in address $B4 and if it's not equal to zero it will also branch forward. So what can we do? Or well, we can use the same trick we can use the Aura Aura $B4 and knowing that it will never reach zero. So let's try that. 118F Aura $B4 There we go, and we've got the original code to decrement, but it will never reach this, this instruction. And here's how. We're going to set another breakpoint at $1199, which is the decrement 1 echo 00. And here we can see that we've got um, to, uh, a watch on memory address 1 echo 0c, which we don't need anymore, so I'm going to delete number 1. And 1199 will only get, will only stop if the program reaches that address. So let's continue. And there we go. And put it into turbo mode. As you can see, we've got infinite lives, infinite air, and we're going to stand a better chance of, of getting out of the, uh, the vault. So how do we put it all together? Let's uh, reset the machine. Let's reload the tape. We're going to auto start it.
Okay, right, the game's now reloaded. Uh, just to prove that everything has been reset. Aha, we've still got the breakpoint. You see this, the decrement. So we know that that is working and that's that's being executed. So I'm going to delete all breakpoints. And here we go, the air's now going down. If I put it into turbo mode, you'll see it depleting. And of course, if you lose a life, you lose a life. But you want to cheat. So how do we do this? Well, we just combine what we, we already know. We can do assemble dollar one one eight F Aura dollar B4 for this will give us infinite air. But obviously we'll still lose a life. Put it into turbo mode and as you can see the air is not depleting. And there we go. Now we wanted our infinite lives. And assemble dollar one two three aura dollar zero a no breakpoints and now when we start the game infinite lives and there you go it's as simple as that could it have been any easier and particularly with today's tools. I hope you enjoyed this session and uh, please feel free to leave your feedback or if you've got a better way of uh, achieving the same results or even better results. Happy hacking!